Hi, I'm Tim Booth. I'm in the bioinformatics team at Edinburgh Genomics, and I'm going to talk about SnakeMake, which is a system for writing data analysis workflows. And it's something that I use quite a lot in my day-to-day -day work. But if you've not come across this before, then if you go to the main SnakeMake website, you'll find this description, which I've just copied here and highlighted some of the key words. So SnakeMake promises to help you create reproducible and scalable data analysis workflows. And if you're working with some biological data, you might well start off with a relatively small test data set, just a few steps that you want to run to do some kind of analysis on that data. But uh, as you add more files, maybe add in more samples or larger input files, or as you add more steps to your analysis process or more options, then the whole workflow can get much more complicated. And SnakeMake helps you keep a handle on that complexity. You can start off by writing your workflow on your regular workstation, but then with very little modification, you can move that uh, SnakeMate workflow to a cluster or a grid or a cloud computing environment and take advantage of the, uh, the high performance computing capacity. Um, and also in bioinformatics, you often need to use a whole bunch of tools within the same workflow. And SnakeMate can help you by capturing a description of what those tools are and even automatically deploying those into a new environment. And it does this by integrating with the Conda package management system. But we're not going to talk about that just now. We're going to focus on the, uh, the core model of SnakeMake and how you can use it and define some simple rules to do a simple data analysis. So a little bit of background before we look at an actual SnakeMate workflow. It's based on uh, a fairly old piece of software uh, that's from back in the 70s called uh, Unix Make. And you'll actually find this on any modern uh, Unix or Linux system. It's used to build software from source code. And uh, in the past, many bioinformaticians have actually recognized that this is something that could help them to write a bioinformatics workflow and have done so. But you rapidly run into some limitations of the Make software, and also the syntax for Make is pretty horrible. So um, back when he was doing this PhD, uh, this chap called Johannes Kurster, who's uh, currently based uh, at the University Hospital of Essen, decided he could do better. And so he wrote uh, a tool inspired by Make, uh, but he wrote it in Python, and hence he called it Snake Make. And um, eight years later, uh, SnakeMake's still uh, very much in development. Uh, it's got quite a large user community. It's an established piece of software. It's completely free, of course, uh, same as Python. Um, and it will run on pretty much any computer. We're going to look at it running on Linux today, but it runs perfectly well on a Mac or even on Windows. So when you use SnakeMake, um, it's a little bit like writing a shell script, but instead of putting a series of commands into a script, you write a set of rules into a file called a snake file. And those rules have defined inputs and outputs and actions. Um, and SnakeMake is going to then look at this set of rules and a target that it wants to produce, some file that it wants to produce as output. And then it's going to uh, look for rules based on their input and output patterns that can produce that target. And then once it's got a plan, it's going to execute that plan to actually do your analysis. So let's have a look and uh, see what that actually looks like in practice. So we've got a, a, an example here where I've got a, a directory with just a few files in it. We've got uh, two CSV files, which are our data. Uh, we've got a script called myplotter, and we've got a snake file with some rules in it. So I'm just going to flip to my terminal here. And so in this directory, we have the files you saw on the slide. Um, and we can just see that, for example, the uh, ds1.csv contains uh, some basic CSV data. And I can run uh, myplotter. Uh, sorry, my plotter minus o foo dot pdf uh, on that ds1 dot csv file, and it will say it's plotting foo dot pdf, and I can just take a quick look at that, um, and there you go. So it's just some really basic toy data where I can plot some csv data. So. Let's have a look at how we can um, make use of SnakeMake. Now, just now I ran the myplotter script straight off the command line, but I have some rules in my snake file here that will allow me to 
uh, produce a plot by using SnakeMake. And SnakeMake is pre-installed on the system, so I can type uh, SnakeMake, and then I have to give a specific file name, which is on the slide, which is ds1 underscore plot dot csv. Oops. Uh, sorry, ds1plot.pdf, let's get this right. Um, and so SnakeMake uh, has now run, and you can see that the uh, the MyPlot script ran, because you can see this output plotting eight records from ds1csv to ds1plot.pdf. And um, yeah, there's the PDF file has appeared. So how did SnakeMake do this? How did it know what command to run? Um, and uh, the answer is in the snake file, but to, to look at this we'll jump back to the uh, the slides. So this is the uh, the contents of the snake file. Uh, it contains eight lines and it defines two snake make rules. So you'll see if you're uh, familiar at all with Python then the syntax will look a little bit look a little bit familiar because you have um, things with colons and indented pieces of text. So here this line and this line uh, define the two rules and then after the keyword is the name of the rule this one's called plot and this one's called filter and then there's a colon and then uh, the output input and the uh, command that the rule is going to run are then declared on these separate lines. So uh, to see how SnakeMate used these rules to produce uh, the ds1plot.pdf file from the ds1.csv dataset. Uh, in fact, we only have to look at the first rule for now. Um, and when I type the snakemake command, what snakemake does is it looks at the file it's trying to make, and then it looks at the rules it has in its snake file, and it looks for a rule where the output matches the, um, the target file. So uh, in this plot rule, the output is curly brackets dataset underscore plot dot pdf. Now the bit in curly brackets is a wildcard, so just like a star in the shell can match uh, any any uh, partial file name, this uh, dataset can match uh, any string. And so if we take uh, this pattern and replace dataset with ds1, then it's a match. Uh, so SnakeMake says, OK, this plot rule can produce this PDF file. And then it takes the uh, value ds1 that it's used to get the match, and it plonks it into the corresponding keyword in the input uh, file. And it says, OK, if I want to make ds1plot.pdf, then I need ds1.csv. Well, ds1.csv is a file that's sitting here already in the directory. So SnakeMake's done. It's worked out how to get from ds1.csv uh, running the plot rule to ds1plot.pdf. And now, once SnakeMake's made its work plan, it will then um, work uh, through the rules. So it will then take the shell command and it will uh, take the output, which is ds1plot.pdf and the input which is ds1.csv it will put them into this command template and then it will just run this shell command. So so far so simple snake makes run uh, one single rule um, but let's ask snake make to make something a little more complicated let's ask it to make ds1 underscore filtered underscore plot dot pdf so what's snake make going to make of this? Well it's going to do exactly the same as it did the first time. It's going to look for uh, a match for this file name within the rules. And you'll see that once again, uh, the plot rule is a match because if you take the dataset keyword, so sorry, the dataset wildcard, and replace it with the string ds1 underscore filtered, then you get the file name ds1 underscore filtered underscore plot dot pdf. Okay, so having matched this rule, once again, takes the, uh, the value of this wildcard, puts it into the input, and here you go, it now knows that uh, in order to run this rule, it needs uh, a file called ds1 underscore filtered dot csv. Well, we don't have this file, but that's not a problem because SnakeMate simply applies its pattern matching rule again. 
and this time we can see that to get a filtered CSV file, well, the output pattern for the filter rule matches. So now, um, in order to get this match and in order to produce this file called ds1 underscore filter dot csv it takes the csv data wildcard in the filter rule and it sets the value of this wildcard to ds1 and then that gets us ds1 filter dot csv as an output it puts the same wildcard value into the input and that says okay in order to uh, produce this intermediate file I need uh, the file ds1.csv and once again that file is right there on the uh, in the directory so by working backwards from the target and applying this uh, wildcard replacement um, process to its rules snakemate gets back until it tries to find a file that you already have and then it knows how to get from this input file to the output file so it now starts running its rules kind of in the reverse order which it discovers them, it first runs the filter rule by taking this input and this output and putting them into the command string and then once that's produced uh, the intermediate file ds1filter.csv it then takes this shell command from the plot rule and it puts the uh, relevant output and input into the template and then it's going to finally produce the file I asked it for in the first place, which is ds one filtered plotpdf And this this whole thing really is the core of how Snakemake uh, builds up uh, workflows from rules. Um, and it's all based on file name patterns and wildcard replacement. But in fact, you can build up some pretty uh, involved and complicated workflows just using these patterns. So it's a very powerful paradigm. So let's actually run this command here and let's make this filtered plot.pdf. I'm going to flip back to my terminal, oops, which is right here. And I'm going to type uh, snake make uh, minus p, I'll tell you why in a second, ds1 underscore filtered underscore plot dot pdf oops pdf uh, now the reason for giving the minus p argument to snakemake is that by default snakemake will print the output so from the commands that it's running but it won't actually tell you the exact command it ran um, and generally you want to see that it's really useful so just uh, using the minus p flag tells snakemake to print out those commands but it doesn't affect uh, the operation of Snakemake at all, it just gives you a little more output. So if I run that, then again I get a report from Snakemake. So uh, it first did its pattern matching to work out which jobs it had to run, and then it ran through its list of jobs. So here it's running uh, this egrep command, which corresponds to the shell command in the filter rule with the correct input and output uh, inserted in. And then after that, it runs the, uh, the myplotter script uh, using the shell command template from the plot rule and with the output set to ds one filtered plotpdf which is the file that we asked for in the first place. And just to prove that that worked, I can pop that up and, oops, if my mouse is working, I can pop that up and see that we've now got uh, the uh, the filtered CSV file has been plotted. Cool. So uh, what if we then go and run the exact same snakemake command again um, and ask it for the same file that it's already produced? Well, snakemake says nothing to be done um, because snakemake uh, by default will actually uh, look at the file you've asked it to produce and if that file already exists and if it can't see any new data that would uh, feed into producing that file, then it doesn't uh, rerun the commands again. And when you're analyzing large biological data sets, sometimes if you're trying to map to a genome uh, that can take hours to run, then actually having a system which only runs the necessary jobs is very, very useful. Of course, if you really want Snakemake to run um, uh, the jobs anyway, uh, then you can force it to do so. So there's a uh, minus F flag uh, tells Snakemake to force run the jobs and then it will run all the jobs from 
start to finish, regardless of whether they think whether it thinks they need updating or not. Um, or uh, if you uh, update the input data, so just to prove that adding new input data does cause Snakemake to rerun, if I take the uh, ds1.csv data file and uh, I'm going to add some interesting otters. Uh, seven, seven, so I've added a new line to my data file and then I'm going to rerun the same snake make command again and it will see that because the timestamp on this input CSV file has changed that it actually needs to rerun its data processing steps. So um, that's pretty nifty I think. <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, so that's the basics of snake make really. Um, the uh, snakemake command itself has lots and lots of different options that you can set, but these are the kind of main flags. So I already showed you that minus p uh, will print the shell commands before it runs them. Uh, the minus n flag is useful. So uh, snakemake can actually then tell you the plan of what it plans to do without actually doing it. So remember that snakemake goes through its pattern matching process and it works out all the steps that it's going to run before it actually does any processing. So if you use the minus n flag, that just tells snakemake to do that calculation, work out what it wants to do, and then it does a report of that, but it doesn't actually do any processing. Um, and that's very useful when you're testing workflows and you want to check that everything looks okay before you actually do any analysis. I showed you minus F, which bypasses the uh, file timestamp checks and forces running all the steps. And uh, also, I couldn't um, go without mentioning the minus J flag. I haven't used it in this demo because um, it wouldn't um, uh, really do anything useful. But uh, if you've got multiple input files uh, and you run uh, minus J4, say, then Snakemake will run up to four tasks in parallel. So you can take advantage of uh, multiple CPU cores on your local machine, or if you're running in a cluster environment, then Snakemake can submit multiple jobs to the cluster at once. So the J flag um, lets you uh, turn your uh, serial uh, workflow into a parallel workflow with very little effort. That's definitely one of the one of the sort of killer features of uh, of Snakemake. Uh, so in summary, uh, Snakemake is a workflow engine that applies rules based on file name patterns and wildcard placeholders, and it will uh, start with the target file name and work through the available rules that you give it in the snake file uh, until it either uh, runs out of rules or reaches uh, an input file that it already has. Uh, then once it's made a full execution plan, it will uh, run the tasks based on um, shell command templates. And you can add more and more rules to your snake file. Um, the order of rules in the snake file is not important. What's important is the file name patterns that SnakeMake is using to uh, discover rules to run. So keeping the uh, the names of your files neat and tidy is important in bioinformatics anyway, so you can tell what you're doing. But in SnakeMake, it's super important because the names of the files are actually driving the workflow that you're running. So that's all I'm going to say for this talk. Um, if you're curious to know more about Snakemake, there's fantastic documentation and tutorials online at snakemake.readthedocs.io or uh, why not check out one of our upcoming courses uh, if you'd like to join those or check out the other things that we uh, teach in uh, uh, Edinburgh Genomics, then that's our website genomics.ed.ac.uk slash services slash training. Thank you very much for listening.